Hello designers! In today's tutorial, we're going to create a parody of the Shepherd Fairy election poster from the 2008 Obama campaign. We are going to be using Illustrator to create this parody primarily using the image trace panel so that we can create a vector object out of our reference image. I'm using myself as the presidential candidate, but you can select whomever you think should be president for an upcoming election. Before I start working on Illustrator, I'm actually going to go and do a little bit of editing of my reference image in Photoshop. I'm going to hit Ctrl O to open my reference image in Photoshop, and I need to make sure that I unlock the background layer. I want to eliminate as much of the background as possible before I place my reference photo in Illustrator. So, I'm going to be using my good old friend, the Magic Wand or the Quick Selection tool so that I can make an instant selection of my beautiful face. I noticed that some of the edges were a little bit jagged around my hair, so I'm going to select and mask and smooth out the edges. Then, I'm going to the Select menu at the top of my workspace and I'm going to select the option that says Inverse. I'm going to hit Delete to try to get rid of the background. As a reminder, the checkerboard pattern means that you have transparency behind your image. I'm going to export my file as a PNG formatted file, and I'm going to call it Part 1 and save it in my desktop. I closed Photoshop because I no longer need it, and now in Illustrator, I'm going to be creating a new document for print using the tabloid preset. I'm going to change the unit of measurements to inches so I can see more clearly what I'm doing, and I'm going to name this document Parity. Then, I'm going to hit Create. I'm going to be using my Layers panel quite extensively for this project, so what I want to do is I want to toggle the Properties and Layers panel open on separate areas of the workspace because I want to have both Properties and Layers visible throughout the whole time that I'm editing. I created a new layer called Background, and now I'm using ColorHunt.co so I can select an interesting color palette for my parody. I'm going to be using this color palette because it uses a lot of flag colors like blues and reds. To create my background, I'm using my rectangle tool and I'm flipping over to the color modes panel so that I can paste my hex code for that bright red into the fill of the rectangle. Then, I'm basically going to go and use a bright yellow for my stroke. Now, I am using bright yellow because I wanted to create some warmth in my overall parody, but you guys can use whatever color combinations you want. The rectangle is not perfectly fitted, so I'm going to ensure that I'm resizing and placing the rectangle within the document ensuring that it takes up the whole of the canvas. You can see how the stroke was too thick in the beginning, so I'm going to go and eliminate a little bit of that thickness, make it thinner, and start dragging on the corners so that I can ensure it fits the canvas. Now that my background is complete, I'm adding a brand new layer, and I'm going to call this one Image. To place the image, I'm going to go to File and Place, and I'm going to look for the image that I had worked on before in Photoshop called Part 1. If I click and drag, I'll be able to place the image and resize it as necessary. As a reminder, images in Illustrator are linked. So, you want to make sure that you don't delete this file from your computer until you are done 100% with this project. Otherwise, Illustrator will give you an error message saying that you need to replace the link. Remember to hold down Shift as you guys go and resize your image. I'm going to use the Image Trace panel 
which I can find by going to the window menu above. And I'm going to use the preset called black and white logo, which as you can see will flatten my image similar to the threshold adjustment in Photoshop. I need to make sure I go to the option in the image trace panel that says ignore color and select white because I want to be able to fill all the black in the image with a different color. And if I leave the white enabled, it's going to give me issues later on. Once I adjust the image trace preset, I want to make sure I click expand in my properties panel. And then I can start playing around with filling the image with a different color fill. Okay, I'm creating a third layer and I'm going to call this layer text or topography. Within this layer, I want to go and add an inspirational word similar to what Shepard Ferry was doing with the word hope during Obama's presidential campaign. Before I write the word, I actually want to go and drag out a rectangle to use as a frame for the word. I'm setting my rectangle to the same dark navy blue that I was using for the image. And then I'm using my type tool so that I can write out the word inspire. You guys are obviously going to select your own inspirational word, whatever you think would fit that candidate. I'm going to ensure that I make it a large enough size and that I select a bold and thick font that is going to be noticeable from a distance. You also want to select a color that you're going to be able to view from a distance. You can see how the light blue that I'm selecting here creates enough contrast with the frame used in the background. Before I continue with my design, I want to ensure that none of these layers move on me. So in the layers panel, I'm clicking in the little empty area between the eyeball and the layer name so that I can lock these layers in place. So I should lock the text layer, the image layer, and the background layer before proceeding. I want to do a little bit of work on the face and the eyes. So within the image layer, I'm creating a sub layer that I am going to be using my pen and curvature tools so that I can go and fill some selections of the face. So you can see how I'm using my curvature tool and dragging a path around the eyes. I'm going to be dragging a path around the lips and around the main face shape. And I'm using colors that I've been using throughout the design. So the same blue that I was using on the word, you can see me using on the eyes so that I can try to have a little bit of unity within the design overall. So in other words, you don't want to use a random color. You want to try to keep it to a color palette of roughly between three and five colors. You guys will recall that in order to create a closed path with the curvature and pen tools, you need to start in some part of the image, keep dropping points, and those points are going to be connected by either curves or line segments. To close the path, you need to go and click on the initial anchor point that you started off with, like you see me doing here for the shirt area. I recommend zooming in and panning over the sections that you want to work on in your designs and then using your direct selection tool, double clicking on those anchor points and adjusting the illustrations a little further. You can see here how I'm just clicking on the anchor points so that I can adjust the curves of the contours of that shape and smooth them out and make them a little bit more refined. You can see that my last path that I'm using here is to go and fill up basically my face. Now you guys don't have to do it in the exact same order that I'm doing. You should be using your curvature and pen tools in some way, shape or form to do some of the face or some of the body or some of the hair. It's completely up to you, but I don't want you guys to copy me either. You can see how I'm going and dragging on those sub layers in my layers panel so that I can play around with the stacking order and make the blue of the eyes and the blue of the lips stand out. You can also see how once again I'm zooming in 
and adjusting the anchor points using my direct selection tool so that I can further refine that edge. At this point in the portrait, I felt like the texture was very flat. So I selected some of the paths that I had created and I'm applying an illustrator effect called Scribble, which you can find under the stylize section of the illustrator effects. And what this cool effect does is that it takes a flat to the area and it basically makes it look like you were scribbling with a pen or a color pencil. You can go and further adjust the settings depending on how much space you want between each of the scribbled lines. You can see that I'm keeping it pretty minimal. And I want to make sure that as I'm dragging on the little settings, it doesn't go past the contours of the face. Because I really liked the effect and I felt like my text was looking very minimal, I decided to apply this same effect to the text. Now this will not work on every single font. It works for the font that I used because it's very thick and very bold. You do not want to use this if your font is a little bit more on the slim side. So you can see how I'm going and selecting my text layer as well and applying the same exact effect to try to give it a little bit more harmony and also to add a little bit of visual interest. Having concluded most of the design, I'm ready to export my final draft by going to File, Export, Export As, and as I typically do, I'm going to export in PNG format. I want to make sure I select the option that says Use Artboards, so that if you have anything else floating around your workspace, it doesn't get included. I also want to make sure that I select a high 300 pixels per inch resolution, as this will ensure that in printing, the image looks good. And that's how you create your parody. Hit me up if you have any questions.